Season one, episode one. We are underway with the Tory Verde era here at the University of Pittsburgh. And tonight, for the first time, it is the Tory Verde radio show right here on the Pitt Panthers radio network. I'm Josh Roundtree with you, joined by the head coach of the Pitt women's basketball program, Tory Verde. Coach, uh, here we are. Uh, you got one exhibition in, but now uh, it's time for the real thing. What's the mood like? What's the excitement level like within the program right now as this gets for real? Yeah, I think that uh, all of our players are super excited about where we are, and they know that we're going to be a program on the rise, and uh, you know they've been working hard. They've been beating each other up each and every single day, <laughs> so it was good to get on, you know, on the court the other night and have an opponent, and uh, you know we're able to, you know, obviously uh, evaluate where we are, and um, you know we did a lot of good things and uh, some things that we need to improve on, improve on, but. You know, as, as a whole, our team is super excited about uh, what the future looks like. Do you get that sense from your team when you get into the, the later stages of summer, like they need to see another jersey? I mean, do you kind of get that sense from them? And did you feel like that was a relief to go out there and particularly play the way that you did against another jersey? Yeah, definitely uh, a relief for them, but good for us, you know, to yeah. see who we are and see somebody else and what they do, um, you know, on both sides of the ball. And uh you know, make some adjustments, and then for us, just to really see who we are as a team, and you know, just to move some people around different positions, and uh, you know, watch us, you know, execute and see if we're systematic. Like my biggest thing is, you know, when our fans leave the P, I want them to feel really good about our team. You know, whether we win or lose, they're like, you know what, that team plays the right way. You know, and there's so much that you can control in this game. You can control how hard you work each and every single day. You control your energy, your effort, your want to. And those are the things that we need to bring, bring to the table each and every single time we play and take the court. You took on Point Park. You scored 117 points. I don't care who you play. To see the ball go in the hoop that much, that has to be a good thing for your players and, and confidence and shooting and all that, right? Absolutely. And uh, it was great to see. And, uh, you know, it was fun to, to witness. And, uh, you know, we have parts, you know, and, and we're putting all the pieces in. And, you know, but uh, – you, not only do you score points, we got to play some defense, and uh, we got to, you know, be a little bit more disciplined defensively and uh, be a little bit more systematic. But I was really pleased, uh, you know, with what we saw on both sides of the ball the other night. You were able, as the game went on, too, to get, like you said, some different units on the floor, mix and match a little bit. Um, did you like the overall chemistry, though, that you guys had as a unit, no matter who was out there? I did, and uh, you know, I, I thought we were very selfless. Uh, you know, we shared the ball extremely well. Um, you know, we rebound on the ball, and, and um, you know, that's the first thing that we need to do. We, 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 we got to beat teams on the boards because if we're able to de uh, defense a rebound, then we could get out in transition and, and, and run to score, and I thought that we did a great job of that. And, you know, all, just all, all, overall, our effort was tremendous, and it was something that, uh, you know, uh, I think people really enjoyed. I, I think my favorite moment of the game, despite the 117 points that you guys scored, uh, there was a moment where you had a timeout, you came out, you didn't like what you saw, and about a second went by, and you took another timeout. Um, I, I like the attention to details there. Is that what you kind of saw, like, hey, we need, to, we need to use this as a teaching moment and, and get this right Absolutely. You know, and I was trying to bring, you know, attention to it. You know, when we're in a timeout and I'm drawing up plays, my team, they need to be locked in, you yeah. know, uh, it, w because – you can lose games, one possession games. If you don't know where you're supposed to be and you don't know what you're supposed to do, you know, in a situational, you know, set, you know, being one possession late game and you go out there and, you know, and you don't do your job, you know, we lose the ball game. And so when we leave our huddle, our players need to know exactly where they need to be. And so, um, you know, I drew up a play. Uh, we weren't in the right spots. I burned a timeout to bring them back in, and I, and I said, look, you know, we need to know exactly, you know, where we are. And if, if you don't know, you know, what you're supposed to do, then let me know. That's okay. I'll change up the play, you know, but I'm going to draw things up on the board. You need to go, and you need to be in the right spot, and you need to do the right thing. And, and so that was a teaching point. I also liked the aggressiveness. You talked about, you know, on the defensive end and probably foul trouble is something that I'm guessing you looked at in that game. But I think you have to like the aggressiveness that you guys played with uh, at both ends. It was, hey, we're going to take it to this team, and they went and did that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it all starts with the defense. We want to, you know, allow our defense to create our offense. So we want to get deflections. We want to get steals. And then, you know, we, we want to uh, run to score. And I thought we, we, we had those opportunities. And, you know, when we needed to play in the half court, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we executed offensively. Uh, and, and so we saw a lot of good things there. 
Um, but, uh, yeah, we definitely wanted to uh, create the momentum of the game. We wanted to push and attack. And, you know, look, when, when people come out and watch, watch us, I want them to be like, wow, you know, they're fun, fast, and furious. These guys go. And it's a great brand of basketball. And so I think a lot of people saw that the other night. Fun, fast, and furious. Is that the, the Verdi staple, or is that something that you sort of came up with for here at Pitt? Because I've heard you say that a couple of times. Yeah, you know, it's a Verdi staple. That's who, you know, that's who we recruit to. That's our identity. You know, I, I want people to, you know, see us, you know, when they see us play, you know, th and they're thinking those things along th those lines. But, uh, you know, more importantly, you know, we want to control the game regardless of who our opponent is. The last thing that we want uh, – you know, to have happen is have a team come into the P and you know allow them to execute offensively. So we want to be disruptive, and I thought we were disruptive the other night, and uh, we turned them over and we're able to uh, turn those turnovers into points. Yeah, absolutely. One segment down. Great work. We got a few more to go. When we get back, we're going to dive into Tory Verdi and, and the path to get to Pitt and what brought you to Pitt. Uh, this being the first show, so we'll talk about that when we come back. This is the Tory Verdi Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We are here at the Campus View Club inside of the Peterson Events Center for the first edition of the Tory Verdi Show. Back in a moment here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Events Center. It is the first edition of the Tory Verdi Coaches Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Josh Roundtree alongside the coach of Pitt women's basketball, Tory Verdi. Uh, first year at the helm, um, head coaching stops, Eastern Michigan, then UMass. Both places, you walked into not great situations. I think that's pretty obvious given the records that those teams had uh, before you got there. Pretty quickly, you turned both of those programs into winners. Was there a common thread between those two places on, on sort of what happened? And um, I guess how much did you learn about how having to turn around culture and programs and, and things like that? Well, to be honest with you, I, I think my past, just in coaching, just in general, every stop that I've had, I've learned something. And you take something away. When I was an assistant coach at the University of Nebraska, we did the same thing. You know, we're one of the worst teams, you know, in the Big 12. And yeah. we built that up. And, you know, by year five, we won the Big 12 championship. And so, you know, I just saw that. Um, I think I stole the ingredients, to be honest with you. Um, and then, you know, just kept moving on. But uh, I, I would say, the, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, who you surround yourself with. Right. Uh, you got, got to surround yourself with, with great people. And then you got to look at, okay, you, you, got how, you know, what's the foundation going to be built on? And, you know, and, and you start from there. And so, uh, but the common thread, I, I would say, is that, you know, you, you need to recruit players, um, you know, who, one, believe in you, uh, who care about the institution and who want to be there. You got to have culture. If you don't have culture, you're not going to win basketball games. You have the best, you know, best. I, I've been saying this. You know, you can have the best players in the country, but if you don't have culture, you're not going to be successful. So it starts there. And what does culture look like? You know, culture, you know, looks like, you know, love and respect. You know, <clears throat> our players know our culture, you know, and they see our relationships with, you know, my coaching staff before we even take the court. You know, so they see my coaching staff, you know, together, connected, um, sharing moments, loving and respecting one another, then they're like, okay, well, that's the expectation. We need to do the same. And so when you care about people, then, you know, it, the love grows and you want to play for them and you want to have each other's back. And, you know, that's kind of, you know, who we are. We're very, very family oriented. We're very, very inclusive and transparent. Um, I think our players know exactly where they stand at, at all times. When they're good, I tell them that they're good. When they stink, I tell them that they stink too because if I don't, then I'm cheating them. You know, they come here because, or they want to play for me because they want to become the best basketball players that they can possibly be. So if they want to do that, I got to give them that constructive criticism and that allows them to grow as an individual. Yeah, and they have that foundation, right? I mean, if they know that you're coming from a place of care when you, when you take a second time out and maybe, maybe rip them for getting something wrong, yep. they know that it's coming from a place of, of we need to get well, better, Well, that, right? that's the biggest thing, you know, and, and for me, building relationships is the most important thing with my players, and so, you know, I take that time, you know, I develop that rapport and relationship with them, because the last thing you want to do is provide them with that constructive criticism, and they become defensive. If they yeah. come defensive, you've already lost, you know, you want them to accept it, you want them to say, okay, you know, Verdi's telling me this because he wants me to be very successful. He wants me to become the best basketball player. That's why he's giving me this feedback, and they're exactly right. But if you don't spend that time to build that rapport and relationship with them, you know, I think coaches fail there. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at Eastern Michigan, you made that connection with Heather Like, yep. and obviously, uh, you know, she made a point in your introductory press conference to talk about how, you know, as your careers went on, you kind of always sort of stayed in touch. Yep. I guess it's a good lesson in, in always keeping those uh, those uh, professional relationships healthy, I guess, if you will. But um, what sort of led to that conversation between you and her to get you back here and um, how quickly, I guess, did, did everything sort of come about uh, when she called you to, to get you back to Pittsburgh? And what sold you, I guess, on coming here to Pitt? Well, I mean, there, there are a lot of factors, you know, but, you know, Heather and I had a great relationship at Eastern Michigan. She, she didn't hire me. She came in my year two, and I had the opportunity to work for her for three years, and, and we're very, very similar. She's yeah. very competitive. Um, she's a caring individual. She wants you to do well. She gets it. She was a player. She's a softball player. So she understands college athletics, and she's so supportive, and I, I want to work for somebody who's that. I want to work for somebody who's like-minded, you know, and so she got that, and so it was so easy, you know, to work for her, um, you know, but as far as you know, uh, Pitt and how that came about. And, uh, you know, it came about late. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, early on they, they were looking, you know, for someone specific. Um, you know, she knew of me, um, obviously. Um, I did stay in touch with her along the way, you know, because I just because I leave somewhere, I, I just don't lose contact with you. Right. Um, you know, and, and I cared about her success, and I followed her success as well. And I was so, so excited, you know, for all the success that she was having here. So we stayed in touch, you know, whether it was a phone call or a text or whatever um, or, or a note. Um, but, um, you know, she, she called and uh, told me that, um, you know, she's looking for somebody who's excited about Pitt. And I told her, I said, I, I, I said, I said, I'm excited about Pitt, and uh, I'm not scared. You know, uh, this opportunity doesn't scare me. It may scare some other coaches because um, coaches in the past, you know, haven't been successful here. Um, it, do it doesn't scare me. And, um, you know, she wanted somebody with, with that enthusiasm, that want to, um, which led me to, to, you know, which led us to, to here. Here we are, you know. And so I'm super excited about this, you know, opportunity. But more importantly, I know that I'm supportive. We have a great team, our administration. They want to win. They care about women's basketball. And so, you know, that to me was the most important thing, you know. And I know that um, as we go throughout this journey, she's going to be there every step of the way. Yeah, how much when you looked at the university, you mentioned her success, volleyball, the soccer programs. When you see the other programs here at Pitt, the you know, non-football basketball, uh, men's basketball programs, how much did that kind of show you, hey, like there is a clear – direction to get better and get better in a hurry across the board with with the program yeah and, and that's what you want you yeah. want that you know and so and she's so caring and she cares about her coaches and she goes out and she visits with them and and that's what you want you know a, as a boss and so having that support being there every single step of the way understanding you know when you know you need a chat or sometimes you know what i'm, I'm gonna give them their space you know she gets that um, but she's driven, and she wants to excel, and she wants to be excellent in everything that we do, and who doesn't want to work that way? And, and, and the other piece is she holds, you know, uh, coaches accountable, yeah. and that's what I want. You know, I want, I want an administrator. I want my boss to hold me accountable. If I'm not doing something right and I stink, tell me I stink. <laughs> now, I'm going to probably tell you I stink before, you know, that conversation occurs, you know, but that's what you want as a coach. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk more with Coach Verdi here on the Tory Verdi Radio Show here at the Peterson Event Center. This is the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're here at the Campus View Club at the University of Pittsburgh's Peterson Event Center. This is the Tory Verdi Show. Um, we were talking about your path here and uh, coming from UMass uh, to Pittsburgh. And obviously, you're not coming alone. You're, you're bringing your family with you. Can you tell everybody about... Your family, and I know you have three kids, and your wife yeah. Heather, and, and obviously there are, some of them are here, some of them are in college, right? So you can kind of break that down yeah. for us. Yeah, no, uh, family of five, and uh, uh, my wife and I will be married 25 years this year, um, this coming June. Yep, um, next summer, and uh, so we've been through it all. And uh, my <laughs> oldest uh, son Tyler uh, is a sophomore. He's going to be uh, hopefully getting into Pitt. Uh, second semester, nice uh, spring semester. So uh, he's going through that process right now, and so we're really excited about that. He was at LSU last year. Uh, I'll say that um, you know he had a lot of fun there. Uh, he liked <laughs> the warm weather, but um, you know we want him to enroll into 
you know, the institution that I'm coaching at, right? And so my middle child is my daughter, and uh, she's a junior in high school. Uh, she's at North Allegheny High, and uh, so she's busy. She plays sports. She plays basketball. She does some modeling. Uh, she's been in, in, in a couple movies here and there, you know, just, you know, just trying to figure things out there. My youngest is uh, uh, Braden, and, and he's in eighth grade as well, and so he's busy playing every single sport. So those guys uh, are here every single game. They're courtside or running around doing something, probably getting in trouble. But, uh, you know, they, they've been here and with me every step of the way. They're going to be loud? I'm guessing that, they, they're gonna. Yeah, uh, you know what? Games, my, or? Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 you'll hear them. You'll hear them. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I know too. I, I was reading that you have football in your family as well. Your dad was a high school coach. Yep. Is that right? That I is, mean, is that is that kind of where you got the the knack for coaching? Yeah, absolutely. So my dad was a, a football coach, um, and uh, he's a really successful football player at Central Connecticut State University. Uh, went on uh, into the uh, NFL. Uh, played a little bit for the Houston uh, Oilers at that point in time. Uh, not long. Uh, but anyways, to make a long story short, football coach uh, through and through. And, uh, you know, I, I guess he was babysitting. Um, you know, my mom would drop me off, and I'd sit on the sidelines, and I'd watch football practice, you know, throughout the summer months as well and uh, throughout the fall. Um, and and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, the one thing that I probably learned was the inter interactions that my dad had with all his football players yeah um and uh, to see them come back as men to our home just to visit you know showed me that you know they appreciated him um and that there was a connection it wasn't just oh he was our high school coach there was a relationship there because they always came back uh to visit us and i always wonder like why are these guys showing up you know <laughs> who are they and you know they they played for him and so just watching, you know, uh, those relationships, the rapport, you know, that he built with them uh, was truly special. So um, it, it was fun. And now I will say this. Um, I never played football. My brother did. <clears throat> and uh, my dad wasn't really happy about that. <laughs> what, what got you into basketball instead of football? Why, why basketball? You know, uh, just from an early age, uh, I had a neighbor and uh, I, I think I was probably four and five years old and I would just, I'd hear the ball bouncing and uh, I'd look out my bedroom window and I'd just watch him, you know, play hoops. And, then, and one day he finally like waved me down and I'm like, okay, I'll go out there and uh, I picked up the ball and I haven't put it down. And so um, I knew once I was done playing basketball, I knew that I was going to be a coach. Um, because if, you know, what's the next best thing? If you can't play it, you know, coach it. And so I've had an unbelievable career and i um, very blessed um, and really happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. That's Tori Verdi. He's going to step out uh, for a couple of segments, and we're going to bring in Marley Washington. Uh, the Pitt sophomore and a captain for this Pitt team. She's going to come in uh, and chat next, and we'll have more with Coach Verdi a little bit later. This is the Tory Verdi Show right here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And welcome back to the Peterson Event Center. It is the Tory Verdi Radio Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. I'm Josh Roundtree, and we're now joined by Pitt sophomore and Pitt captain Marley Washinitz. Uh, we talked a few times, obviously, last year during your freshman season, um, but you were not a captain then. Uh, you were just a freshman trying to uh, find your way, I guess, through a first year as an ACC player. Um, a sophomore being a captain isn't something you see a ton of. What did that mean, Marley, to you to, to get that nod and, and to be a leader on this team that's just a second-year player? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, but to have that and, like, no, because obviously it wasn't just given to us by the coaches. Obviously the team had to vote for it. So just knowing that my teammates saw me as a leader and they wanted me to lead this team, I think was enough said. Um, th my work ethic showed it and the way I hold myself and hold each other accountable, I think showed it. So just having their kind of trust in me and how they perceive me and just kind of, it was a little bit relieving to see, you know, that my work ethic and everything that I'm doing isn't, you know, just you know, going to waste. Like, my teammates see it, my coaches see it, and now I just have a bigger role in the team, nothing I can't handle. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, obviously, you were here last year. There's a coaching change made. You had a chance to leave, <laughs> but you didn't do it. What made you want to stay at Pitt, and what made you want to play for Coach Verdi? Yeah, so uh, Heather Like obviously, is one of the best ADs, if not the best in the country. Obviously, maybe I'm biased, but um, I think she's one of the best ADs, and I had nothing but full trust in her that she would find the right coach for us. I mean, you look at volleyball, you look at football, yeah. wrestling, almost every sport, even men's basketball, you know, transform within a year. So I uh, definitely had a lot of trust in our athletic department as a whole, and then they were very transparent with us as, you know, us four were still 
fully locked in and with the team. They're very transparent with us. And I just wanted to give Pitt the same opportunity that they gave me, you know, when I first came here. So I just wanted to give them that same opportunity. And um, it was really funny that they ended up hiring Coach Verdi because he recruited me when I was in high school. And I was very fond of him. He made it uh, a little bit harder for me. Um, to find a school to commit to my senior year, but uh, I couldn't be happier with who they picked. Yeah, and you were uh, kind of involved behind the scenes too, talking with Pitt leadership yeah. about the next coach and the direction of the program. What, what was that like coming off your freshman year to you know, at least have a say in, in what was going to happen with this program going forward? Yeah, so obviously the numbers were a little bit limited, um, so there's <laughs> only four of us to pick from, but um, I'm just very thankful that they you know, chose me and the confidence, the trust, the loyalty that they saw in me. Um, just having that in the back of my mind was something that I was very grateful for, and you don't see that at very many athletic programs, if at any, um, that they include the athletes. So just knowing that we have an athletic department that really and truly cares about their players the way they do, I think that is a wide eye-opener example of just to show you how much the athletic department really cares about the teams. What is different, and obviously you have one exhibition game under your belt now, but what is different about the way that this team plays compared to, to the Panthers we saw last year? Um, this team is a bit of the opposite in a good way, <laughs> but uh, I think this team's very disciplined. We all love each other on and off the court. We have, you know, adversity. Everyone faces adversity, but I think the way we're able to bounce back and take accountability and ownership of, you know, when we are in the wrong, um, it might not be right at that time, but later down the road or, you know, a few minutes later, we're all going to be like, hey, sorry, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have done that, et cetera. But I think the bond that this team has on and off the court, even from the staff to the players, um, is just something you don't see at a lot of schools. I think a lot of schools want that, but it's not easy at this level. Everyone's competing for a spot. Everyone's competing for playing time. So you have a lot of, like, jealousy and adversity, but with this team, everyone's happy for each other. And I think that's just one thing, like, our chemistry off the court truly translates onto the court. And obviously, despite all that, you still compete with mm -hmm. each other day by day. I mean, what was the summer like? What was the process of, of going through the grind of the summer and, and getting ready? And, and how do you feel like that chemistry has gone amongst the competition that you had with one another? Yeah, so the summer, we were, like, still slowly adding pieces, obviously, right, right. as most people know. But, uh, I mean, coming in as four returners, we knew what we wanted, and we made sure that we wanted to implement that as immediate as possible. So even when the freshmen came on campus, we were very open. We helped, everyone helped everyone move in. Everyone went and hung out. We got food that day. You know, we were making sure everyone felt included. And then as more people came on, we made sure that everyone knew that that was the standard and that was what they're going to continue to do, not just us four returners, but everyone who's on the team, you're going to continue to do that. So I think us four returners were very prominent and very open about what we wanted and what we didn't want. And I think the people coming in were all on the same page. Obviously, we wanted transparency, honesty, uh, a family environment, and we just want to have fun. And I think that's what this team wants to do and that they do every day. What's different about you as a player? Would you focus on, would you get better at in this offseason? Uh, I think what's different for me, obviously, I have a bigger role on the team this year than I did last year. Um, so definitely that responsibilities have amped up a bit. Um, nothing I can't handle, of course. But uh, I think from a you know individual on the court type of look, uh, I think I've definitely... Had to become more vocal. As I mean, I'm a very vocal player as it is, but I have to be a little bit more vocal, more thorough. I can't let things slide. I have to hold each other, hold you know myself along with everybody on the team accountable more. Um, and then just you know, being a smart player, I have to value the ball more. It's something I've struggled with in the past, and I obviously still can struggle with is you know turnovers and just fighting the ball so just making sure that I don't throw the needle just playing the safe throughout and uh you know looking for my opportunities when I have them don't you know pass up you know if you have an open three layup whatever but also making the right play and keeping the team together and when things you know hit adversity or hit the wall I have to make sure I bring the team in I have to bring everyone back in to get us on the same page <clears throat> along with um defensively uh I I've struggled with some fouls but I think personally personally I think I've gotten better coach would beg to differ but I think personally I've gotten better <laughs> Um, you always, throughout last year, you know, whether you're playing a lot, playing a little, you always had, I think, the best support section maybe of any oh, yeah. player. Your, your family, <laughs> uh, you're not from that far away in no. Fairmont in West Virginia, but um, they always seem to make the trip uh, every game. They always sit right behind yeah. me as well, so I, I get to talk to your family a good bit. Um, but I didn't know this, that... Uh, one of your relatives is <laughs> America's sweetheart, Mary Lou Retton, <laughs> is, one of your, uh, is one of your relatives. Can you explain that connection in your family, and, and what is that like to be, uh, to be related to an Olympic gold medalist? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really crazy, but to me, it's just like, she's my cousin, Mary Lou Retton, like, Mary Lou, I go over to her house, I go with her kids, etc., but... Um, I think my support system for my family is unbelievable. I mean, they make it to every game they can. And even Mary Lou, she's going through it right now. I mean, yeah. she's 
out, fought some things that some people and even her, maybe herself didn't think she could fight through. Um, and she was here to support me in my game. And, you know, just having her there was something that I'll never forget. That's the first time she's ever seen me play a college game, maybe even basketball in general. But um, her as a person, I mean, she's such a joy to be around. And, I mean, I was joking earlier. I was like, that's where I get all my talent from. But, <laughs> I mean, maybe it is. <laughs> um, no, but she's the reason I started gymnastics. I did gymnastics for a few years, I think up until I was, like, maybe six. And, I mean, I swear gymnastics is the reason I'm, like, nearly as strong as I am. I mean, my, both of my brothers are twigs, and I'm the only one that's, like, kind of bit pure <laughs> muscle. But, um, no, I, I can't be more happy to have her as a cousin, someone to lean on. I mean, she's gone through some things that most people people could never even fathom to go through. So just always having her in my corner and being able to know that I can talk to her about legitimately anything, uh, as she's probably gone through most, if not all, you know, type of adversity. So having someone like her, you know, just to talk to, relate to, and have the nice corner at all times is something that not very many people get to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I mean, it's just such a, a cool connection for you as far as, you know, one of the great athletes in, in American history. And it's so funny because so many young people, they're like, I'm like, yeah, my cousin Mary, like, oh, who's that? I'm like, and I, like, explain it to them, but, like, older generations are like, oh, my gosh, there's no way. I'm like, it's just so fun to see that, like, millennial, genetic, whatever it is, like, gap. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I told my wife this when I got home the other night. I was like, Marley's related to Mary. <laughs> my wife loves gymnastics. She was oh, like, yeah. well, I'm coming to every game now just in the <laughs> chance that I could. So that's, that's another person that will be there Amazing. a lot uh, trying, to, trying to see Mary Lou. Uh, Marley, thanks. Appreciate you taking yeah. the time. Uh, we have Coach Finley coming in next. Candace Finley's going to join us next. Anything that you can uh, give us any info on, on Coach? Anything that has uh, stood out to you in, in the brief time now that you've been together? With Coach Finley? Or yeah, Co with Coach okay, Finley. Okay, Coach Finley. Um, I mean, yeah, her, her prominence on the court. I mean, she's feisty. She's fierce. And I think that's how I am as a player. So, I mean, I think she just keeps firing it up. She says all the right things. She echoes things. She works with the big guards, although she doesn't work with me. But, I mean, everything she says, I take it to heart. I value it. She knows what she's talking about. And, you know, she's got a big role on our team. So you might have to blame Mary Lou for not being one of the big guards. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's done my growth. Yeah. Got, yeah. Got that. <laughs> I'm not Marley, a big guard. <laughs> Marley, thanks, uh, as always. And we'll do this again soon. That's Marley Washington. We'll be back with uh, Panthers assistant coach, Candace Finley, this is the Tory Verde Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Club here at the Peterson Event Center at the University of Pittsburgh. This is the Tory Verde Radio Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're now joined by Candace Finley, Panthers assistant coach and recruiting uh, coordinator. And uh, you and I got to talk a little bit a few weeks ago. We did a video uh, for, for Pitt's uh, social media stuff, but uh, good to sit down with you again. And um, I guess if you could, can you just sort of introduce yourself to all the people listening, all the people watching uh, here at Pitt tonight, and, and sort of give us your path through basketball to get you to this point? Yeah, so I was uh, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. You know, I played basketball from about sixth grade to 12th grade. Then I went on to college at Eastern Kentucky, played there for four years, went overseas, um, played in Luxembourg, and then I didn't think I was going to be coaching. Yeah. I wanted to be a fashion stylist, and <laughs> I, that was my major. And Very I wanted, different career paths, yes, for Yes, sure. you know, I wanted to make a lot of money, making a lot of people look really good. Um, and then the person who helped me get into college, he saw my father, and he was like, hey, when Candace comes home, can you, you know, have her, you know, reach out to me? And so I did, right? You pay it forward. And I went to one of the uh, AAU practices, and it's like, as soon as I went in, it was just instant. Yeah. You know, telling the players to go harder, telling them to make their layups, the attitudes. Of, it, it, it was just like naturally. And from there, you know, I coached AAU. I coached high school. I was a head coach at high school in Michigan at Romulus High School. And then I coached Division Two at Southern Connecticut. Then I would... Um, went back to Eastern Kentucky to my alma mater, and, you know, that was amazing to yeah. be there. And then I had the opportunity. That's when uh, Coach Brady got the job at Eastern Michigan, and I was like, man, this opportunity for me to get back home, and I was, you know, thankful that he hired me there. And then i kind of been with him ever since. Yeah. You know, I went to UMass uh, for a couple years, and then we kind of it broke apart, right? Like, I've learned so much from him, and I wanted to put all of that in use. So I went to uh, Xavier for four years, and then when he got the opportunity, when, when he got the job here, it was another opportunity for me to um, move up in my career and to learn more. Yeah, you know, so Abs absolutely. I mean, it's obviously uh, every coach has 
these routes and you never know, I guess, when you're going to reconnect. Uh, when you got to, to Eastern and, and you met Coach Verdi and, and you got that relationship going, what did you learn about him then? And, and what's that relationship been like between the two of you ever since then? And who is, who is Co Coach Verdi, the basketball coach, and away from the court as well? Yeah, so the first thing that I learned about him as a young assistant coach is that he demands greatness. And he, just like he doesn't want his players to slip and not do everything the right way, that's how he was for us assistant coaches, right? Yeah. And he pushed, he pushed me as a coach. He pushed me out my comfort zone. He grew me, you know, all my insecurities. He's like, no, you can do this. And so from that time working with him, he's always been like my mentor in coaching. Um, even when I went, you know, to Xavier, like I would still talk to him and, ask him different questions and just reach out to him and he would just always say you're ready to be a head coach you're ready I'm like I don't know you know um so like he's a passionate person right he cares and a lot of people don't know that they look at his facial expressions <laughs> but he's a coach that really cares he's passionate he wants the best for everybody whether it's on the court off the court um as a person like he's a big teddy bear he is. Big teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, he's a big teddy bear. He'll probably be like, he'll listen to this and be like, seriously, you just called me a teddy say, bear. Never call me a teddy bear. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, he is. You know, he's he's a family person. He he's really big on family. Um, like to me, he's not just like my boss. He's like family to yeah. me. Um, so like I appreciate him. You know, like his his wife, his kids, everybody. Like we're just a big family. We experience a lot, the best of the best and the worst of the worst, and so. You know, you, you get that connection. Yeah, absolutely. As far as your roles um, on the court and away from the court with Pitt, um, recruiting obviously a big part of, of what you do, mm -hmm. and then uh, working with the bigger guards, mm -hmm. I guess the betweeners or the wings, some mm -hmm. people call them. Um, first things first, on the court, what's it been like working with this group of players, and, and how encouraged are you by the progress they've made in sort of the brief time that you've been with them? Yeah, you know, the, the best part about it is that the players that we have, they want to get better. They want to yeah. win, they want to get better, and they're sponges, you know, and they go hard every time. Like, I sometimes, like, during our workouts, I would just try, I was like, okay, today's going to be a day, I'm just going to push them really hard <laughs> to see if they would, like, quit or not, you know, not push themselves, and th they've stepped up to the challenge. You know, they've pushed themselves, and, and they just want to be good, and, and, and they are, and they're, you can see the growth. And you can see their confidence, and so it's you know it's really good. So they're so they're thinking probably like, hey, what what got into her today? What, <laughs> what crawled up there? And then, and then you're like, oh, this is all intentional. I, I I'm doing this on purpose to push them. Oh actually. yeah, they they laugh about <laughs> it afterwards. It was like we know what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, that's awesome. From a recruiting standpoint, what's that been like here for? for you guys as a program would have, I guess, been the early returns mm -hmm. and um, what kind of connections have you guys made and the interest that you've you know, drawn here to Pittsburgh as a new staff? Yeah, you know, we, from day one, we've been hitting the ground running, right? Like, we did not breathe the first three weeks and I was like, what <laughs> am I into? But, um, you know, we've been fortunate to get a lot of the top kids in the country to come to campus, um, whether they're, you know, kids for coming in next season or down the road. Um, it's just a battle in recruiting, you know, because we're recruiting, you know, against some of the top, you know, right. teams in the country. But why not pit, you know? And if we get them to campus, we change the vision. You don't want and, them to leave. Yeah. So we get them here, and you know, they get here like, oh, we didn't know this was like this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's it's been good for us, you know. Well, I think the one thing that I learned is you're probably going to have the best fit on the sideline, right? The, the outfit in the game better be strong. <laughs> if you were going to go down Fashion Road, it's, you got to bring it on the sideline, right? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> now I just set the bar real yeah, high. Yeah, now, now you, so you just, I like, uh, I got to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ross Park Mall, look out. She's, she's coming. Yeah. Candace, thanks. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk again me. soon. But uh, great stuff. That's Candace Finley. We'll be back with Coach Verdi after this. This is the Tory Verdi Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. All right, great. Great stuff from Marley, great stuff from Candace as well, as this is the Tory Verde radio show here on the Pitt Panthers radio network. And uh, Coach joining us again, and uh, we, we were just talking with Candace, and you and I were talking off the air, but you bring in a, a coaching staff uh, that has a lot of experience. Ty Margenthaler and, and LaCale Malone and obviously uh, Candace. I mean, they and Anthony Brammer as well, uh, who's a younger guy but has some pretty good experience. But you bring in a group of coaches that, that have been around the block, and it seems like that's something that 
that you wanted and, and you probably needed here as you know first year in a new program? That well, number one, it was so important to do that. Uh, you can't be successful in this conference when you're bringing in coaches that you got to coach up. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's so much to do, and so I knew that going in. Um, you know, I had to bring in a staff that was extremely experienced, and so uh, once I hired my assistant coaches, I knew uh, that they could hit the ground running, and that's exactly what we did. And so, um, you know, I think that we're further along right now than we probably should be. Um, you know, knock on wood, um, but I feel really good about uh, you know the staff that we have, and I think more importantly, like, you know, they're, they're fun to be around, and, and I love coming into work each and every single day, and. Uh, they believe in the same things that I believe in. And, um, you know, we just have a certain amount of chemistry amongst our staff that is truly important because our players need to see, you know, exactly who we are as a team. And so um, I think that, you know, they know uh, that we love and respect one another. And, um, you know, we're a lot of fun to be around. And so I think there's a lot of that um, is, you know, I, I think it's so valuable because our players see that and, you know, and they understand the expectations. Yeah, absolutely. And, and obviously, you know, Candace involved in the recruiting side of things as well. They're all involved, I guess, in, in recruiting, but yep. as the coordinator, um, what's been your take on sort of those efforts? And now, I mean, how different is recruiting when you talk about things like the portal and how do you structure? Is it, is it different maybe than it was for you five years ago, the way that, that you recruit now? Everything's different, you <laughs> right. know, and, and it's just like my head's still spinning from everything. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you could see, you know, teams that uh, are struggling um, one year and all of a sudden go from the bottom to the top because of the transfer portal. Yeah. And vice versa. You, you could see teams that are really successful, and then all of a sudden they get poached from other, you know, programs around the country. Yeah. And then you lose, you know, maybe two or three of your best players. Um, and then you drop. So it's just, you know, it, 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 it's a crazy time, um, you know, and... Uh, the whole NIL and, and, and what we're seeing now uh, is, is just, you know, something that I never thought that would happen. In, but now we're here and we have to make adjustments and, you know, this is what we're dealing with. And so we would be crazy not to change. And so uh, I think that my staff has done an unbelievable job and uh, we've gone, you know, after players. And uh, the, the, the one thing that I will say that I've been most impressed with, with, with my staff is just their ability to develop relationships. Um, their abilities just to go out, you know, and, 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 and look for and contact uh, student athletes um, and then developing that relationship because that's huge. Um, I know that we'll be able to attract, uh, you know, top 50, top 100 kids here, um, and I know that we'll eventually get them. But when they're here, the most important thing is developing them. You know, we want, you know, we want to develop their skill set and we want to make them into the best basketball players that they can possibly be. And I know that we're doing that right now. You talk about the portal um, and it's it's just there's no way around it. You have to utilize it now as, as any team in the country. And particularly when you start diving in, I mean, Virginia Tech was in the final four last year and they returned like three players from that team. Right. The rest of them are. Are, are portal players and you just look at it's just how it is you it seems like the players that you got from the portal have that power five experience they were at big programs a lot of them that they they saw really good uh, basketball was that intentional or is that just kind of how it how it broke down at the end of the day when you brought players to campus well i think that it I, I think it was a combination um who was available number one yeah who could help us um, you know, and so that, that in, in, in three, you know, at that point, we just needed bodies. And we, <laughs> when I took over, we had four players, we right. had four returners, um, and then we had two freshmen. So we had a team of six, and, you know, we needed to find six people, and, you know, it was late, um, you know, and the portal was already picked through, but it was like, okay, who's available? Um, but more importantly, like, we're, we're not going to just go out there and just grab anyone. You know, they they got to have great character. I'm not going to go recruit and, and bring in players just because of their skill set they got to be good people they got to be invested they got to have a want to they got to believe in me and, and and understand what our program is all about and so um you know and that's what we're trying to do so i'm very cautious about who we bring in right but at the same point in time you know we need to try to go out and bring the best basketball players that we could possibly bring uh to the university and uh, we're going to do that and we're not going to sit back and we're not going to wait uh we're going to be aggressive uh and we're, we're going to you know, turn over every rock that we can, and, uh, you know, and we're going to outwork people. We're going to outwork our opponents, and, uh, you know, my assistants, you know, we've been doing that daily, and uh, the change will come, and, and it will happen, 
and hopefully, you know, pretty soon it's going to have a pro profound effect. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing something that hasn't been done before here in the ACC in the last 10 years. Yeah, sounds, sounds awesome. I can't wait to, to watch it happen. We're going to talk more about those players when we come back. This is the Tory Verdi Show. We're here at the Campus View Club uh, at the University of Pittsburgh. Pitt men's basketball in action tonight in their exhibition game against Pitt Johnstown. Panthers had their exhibition uh, as far as the women's side a couple of days ago. Dropped 117 points. That's always nice to hear. And now it gets for real on Tuesday night against Yale here at 7 o'clock. We'll talk more about that and about this current Pitt team when we come back with Coach Verdi on the Tory Verdi Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Here on the Tory Verdi Show, just a few minutes left, a couple more segments to go, and uh, we're going to talk about this, this team that you have here, the team that you put together and you talked about sort of the, the philosophy of getting kids into this program and um, and just building a, a team as a whole uh, this group that you have now um, what excites you about I guess the strength though like what do you feel like is, is maybe a strength that you guys have um, and what do you feel like you guys are, are going to be good at this year from a positional standpoint well you know there, there's a couple things in and so I, I always tell them this like you are, you are in control of your effort each and every single day, and so um, regardless of what the score is and what the results are, like you cannot work your opponent. That's controllable. Your energy, you're in control of that. So like, you know, I want people when they watch us play, they leave the P. I want them to be like, okay, wow, you know, they play the right way, you know, and I want them to be proud of, you know, how hard we work. And so to me, those are all the all the controllables, but. You know, one, the one thing that I love about this team is that they're so unselfish. Um, and then number two, they want to win. You know, and that's the thing that excites me. Like, they want to win. And I know the four returners, you know, want to win. But, you know, they, they've all come from different ships. We're all on the same boat now. They're excited. They want to win. They want to change the trajectory of the program um, and, 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 you know, and, and jump on the national scene. Uh, but they get excited about one another, and I think that you saw that, you know, the other night. I think that you saw them, you know, regardless of who scored or the five charges that we took, which was huge. Yeah. Um, you know, and, I mean, five charges in a game. I, I nothing mean, made you more excited, I could tell, on the sideline of the Chargers. I, I, I got it, 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 it's the little things, and, and that to me is it's huge, you know, because you know, and we challenged them at halftime because in the first half we were trying to block every shot. You know, we will let them drive baseline. And I said, guys, look, like, stop challenging shots. You know, stop leaving your feet. Rotate over and pick up charge. Because when you block a shot, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you're going to get the ball, right? <laughs> you could block a shot. They could get the ball back and they could so, still score. If you rotate over and you pick up a charge, not only do they pick up a foul, but you get the basketball. So I think option number two is a little bit better. And I explained that to them. And, and so for them to go back out and then pick up another three and then up five charges, I, I think that was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, they were being coachable. They were listening. Um, and I think that this team, they want, like I've said it before, they want to win. And we're showing them the way, and they're eating it up. Uh be remiss if I didn't talk about one of the returners that, that obviously had a great night the other night against Point Park, but Leah Tu King uh, had a really solid year last year. What have you seen from her game from maybe when you stepped on campus to, to where she is now, and, and do you feel like she's you know, maybe developing into a player that you can sort of run things through and, and go to when you need her? Yeah, I would say confidence. You know, you look at what she did last year, she's second leading scorer at nine points a game, um, and you know, I've had conversations with her, and I said, look, you every time you touch the ball, score the ball. And she looked at me like I was crazy. I'm like, when you touch the ball and you catch it, look to score. We need you to score, and you could do that for us. And so, just hearing that from me, I think that her confidence uh, really, you know, took off. And so now you see her looking to score every single time, and we need that from her. I think that she could be one of the best scoring forwards in the ACC. I really believe that, you know. And I just think that, you know, her like. like the moment that she heard it from me, you know, I think that it was a game changer for her. And so um, I expect great things from her, for, from her uh, to come. Yeah, 24 points for her in the exhibition. Uh, we'll talk about what's ahead. The Panthers opening up their season Tuesday night. We'll, we'll dabble into that a little bit and talk about the non-conference schedule ahead as well when we come back. It's the Tory Verde Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. All right, one final segment here on the first ever Tory Verde Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And... 
Coach, uh, Tuesday night, it gets real, 7 o'clock. You, you tip it off against the Yale Bulldogs. Uh, can you give us a, a little taste of Yale? I know that you saw them last year with UMass. Um, what are they like, and, and what do they do coming out of the Ivy League? Well, I mean, they have six of their, you know, top seven returners coming right. back. So, uh, you know, they're experienced. They have a dynamic point guard, uh, scoring guard, uh, who's terrific. Uh, she just can score the ball. And so we got to do a great job of containing her. We can't just allow her to you know, get free and, and, and uh, attack the basket all night long, but they could shoot, they could score it all three levels. So we're going to have our hands full, uh, no question about that. We're excited about this opportunity opening night, but uh, regardless of who we play, I expect whether it's CNN in a scrimmage, whether it's, uh, you know, Point Park, regardless of who we're playing, I expect us to go out there. I expect us, I, I expect us to work hard. Uh, I expect us to, you know, execute on both sides of the ball and outwork our opponent. And so, um, I know that we'll show up, we'll be excited, and uh, you know, hopefully we could score more points than them and, and get our first W. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the final thing for you, you obviously have a, a non-conference schedule that features uh, games here in Pittsburgh, one of them at home against West Virginia and then against Duquesne um, right down the road. Was it important for you to, to have rivalries involved with your team, and how excited are you about, you know, I know you don't look too far ahead, but to have those games against some regional rivals. Right, you know, I don't. I, I mean, I look at, you know, the day, to be honest with you, and like today we practice, and you know, we gotta win the day, you know, and once you're able to couple all those days together, then it puts you in a position, you know, to win your first game, and that's what, exactly what I told our, our team today. And so, as far as all non-conference goes, you know, we gotta put a schedule together. Duquesne's on at West Virginia. <laughs> you know, yes, it's a rivalry game. I, I guess the fans love it. To me, it's just the next game, and so, uh, regardless of our opponent, I'm going to be the same coach that I, you know, that I am. I, I'm not going to get more excited because we're playing West Virginia, you know, or Duquesne or Point Park. It, it, it doesn't work that way, you know. And so um, I expect the same from my team. So regardless of our, point, our opponent, we need to do what we do each and every single day. And if you're able to do that, you're going to start having success. And it's what you do. And if we could just win the day. Um, every single day, we're going to continue to get better as a team, and then it's going to put us in a position to be successful and then win some games. Win the day. I, I like the motto, and, and I think that's what you can expect to see from this Pitt team throughout the 2023-24 season. Appreciate it. This was great. Great talking to you, and, and uh, I, I guess for the folks that are here, folks listening, uh, your final like sales pitch, I guess, if you will, as far as uh, what they can expect from the Pitt Panthers here in 23-24. Yeah, well, you know, number one, thanks for having me. Appreciate, uh, you know, the opportunity to uh, get on and, and tell everyone our story. And uh, my final sales pitch is uh, don't miss out. Don't miss out. Come out. Our players deserve you. You know, they, they deserve you to be at our games. Uh, they've been working extremely hard. Uh, I promise you, you will be proud of the product that we put out on the floor. Uh, we're going we're gonna to work extremely hard. I can't tell you what the results are going to be, but what I can tell you is when you leave, you're going to have a sense of pride. You're going to feel really good about this team, and you're going to start seeing us come together and, uh, and make change, and change will happen. I promise you that. Awesome. Cannot wait to see it. Let's give it up for Coach Verdi uh, out joining us here. This is the Tory Verdi Radio Show. Thanks as well to Marley Washinitz and Candace Finley. And uh, again, the Panthers, they tip it off Tuesday night here at the Pete, 7 o'clock against the Bulldogs of Yale. We'll have that game for you if you cannot make it out on the Pitt Panthers radio network, of course, as always. I'm Josh Roundtree for Tory for Tory Verde. Hope you have a good night and uh, enjoy the men's game if you're here watching tonight as well as the Panthers men's team is in action. We'll talk to you next time here on the Tory Verde Show on the Pitt Panthers radio network.